So what we're going to be looking at is the spread of the zombie myth. Um, not real zombies, not voodoo zombies, but more specifically um, George Romero style flesh-eating uh, zombies. You've seen them probably all over the place on the internet and Facebook. Um, in the movies, um, it's kind of wherever they've they've shown up in all sorts of places. So for this present, we're going to be looking at maybe how all of that began. Um, so where I want to start is actually with the trailer from Night of the Living Dead, since that's where this sort of Romero flesh eating zombie got its start in popular culture. Welcome to a night of total terror. <laughs> and what you're seeing here is the actual movie trailer that was shown in theaters. And it's pretty gruesome and pretty gory. Of the living um, dead. And it, the dead. you know, sparked enough interest in this flesh. really low-budget, B-rated horror film released in the 1968. Launched the, living. Uh, the zombie phenomenon so the living as we know it today. The Although food for they these didn't entirely launch it. Creatures. So, like I said while I was over-talking the preview, um, this is kind of where it starts. And many people, you know, actually say this is where it first began. This is where we get flesh-eating zombies, but zombie film, zombie and pop culture, zombie and mythology really didn't start here. You know, here are some of the posters from some very early zombie films, right? Here's White Zombie, which I believe is 1932, um, starring Bella Lugosi. Um, you know, before Night of the Living Dead, the zombie was always sort of a second-rate movie monster, right? We were more scared of Dracula, Wolf, uh, Wolfman, Frankenstein, uh, more scared of, you know, big giant mutant blobs or extraterrestrials or whatever um, coming to destroy everything. And, and the zombie was just kind of, the films were made, nobody really cared. But all of a sudden, in the early 2000s, zombies just go nuts, right? Resident Evil video game comes out, one of the most popular video games of all time. And then the Resident Evil movie franchise, and 28 Days Later, um, and even Romero's movies, and, and he kept making them after Night of the Living Dead, about once every 10 years, so 78, and then 85, and then nothing through the 90s, and then all of a sudden in 2000, I mean, he's put out three movies in the last 10 years that are zombie films, but they're all over the place, right? The 28 Days Later has had a sequel. Uh, Resident Evil, I think, is coming out with six, uh, or six is actually in theaters right now. Um, so, I know a lot of you are thinking, what does this have to do with the internet? Well, here's just a simple thing that I pulled off of Facebook, right? And I think if you're on Facebook, you're familiar with the little 
you know, sort of PowerPoint cards that people put up with something funny on them. You know, the, the internet memes, as you were. Um, and zombies have become a meme in and of themselves, right? They're all over the place. Right, I mean, here's another example, right? Because of the internet and web 2.0, the zombie, which was always a second-rate movie monster, you know, for almost a century, and then becomes a very popular monster within the last 10 years, now it's all over the internet and the internet's allowing us to spread it, right? Uh, in the top corner, you know, remember last summer the, the guy trading somebody in Florida was high on some drug called bath salts. It's turned into an internet meme. Um, the one in the bottom left corner, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I can't tell you the number of high school students I know who sort of have a zombie apocalypse plan. Right, and yet, I mean, we look at this, you know, these are all about zombie apocalypse. It's something that people are spending time thinking about. Um, I'd actually argue that some of my high school students are actually rooting for it. Um, so what does that mean, right? Why is this important that we've got these zombie things spreading out through all forms of culture, spread through the internet? Well, I would argue that the zombies telling us something important about ourselves, right? We don't just randomly pick things and they catch wildfire, right? Um, there's something in them. Sometimes it's just humor, you know, like the cat photos all the internet. Or if you think back to the 80s, if you're old enough to where's the beef commercials. Sometimes it's just the outrageousness of something funny, that spreads. But other times it's something more, right? I mean, the zombie is a monster. And we go to see it for you know, in the horror films, so there's something in this scary thing that is attracting us. There's a story that our culture needs to tell and that we all at least subconsciously get. So after doing some research and looking at this, I think we're looking at a revitalization movement. Um, essentially, and you guys can read this slide, um, Essentially, if a culture isn't working, people come up with all sorts of rituals and ideas that they move forward with in an attempt to fix it. And sometimes you're not even sure why the culture isn't working. Um, but the ideas sort of organically spring out of the sense that it doesn't work. Um, and like I put on the slide, usually they're religious in nature, right? I, I mean, you can think back to different doomsday cults or you know religions that have that aren't doomsday cults but that start out um, in response to some other sort of religion um, we could actually go back to the uh, the Cheyenne ghost dance um, and there was a, a whole movement during the 1800s of different Native American groups that were attempting to use their sacred dances to bring back the white buffalo to get rid of the white man Right, and revitalization movements, like I said, are usually religious in nature because traditionally cultures are very religious. I, I think our culture has more of a secular bent, right? I mean, we may be Christians or Muslims or Jews or whatever, uh, Buddhists, you know, um, but it's not the controlling factor of our entire culture, so um, when we do a revitalization movement, it's not religious. Um, here's a good example of revitalization movements and culture change, right? Cargo cults in Melanesia and Micronesia. Um, essentially, white explorers showed up, we had all of this stuff, and the Melanesians didn't know how we got it. Um, shamans had visions, and they said, here, create the white man's magic. And what you see from these pictures are they created our magic. They would build big effigies of uh, airplanes, because they saw the airplanes dropping cargo during World War II in an attempt to get the airplanes to drop cargo for them. Um, one group thought, and it's uh, called by an anthropologist marching rule, thought that perhaps it was the British soldiers drilling was the magic they were using to get the guns. So they started entire magic rituals around marching like British soldiers um, in an attempt to get the cargo. Right? They're trying to change the culture. I think that's what we're seeing with the zombies, right? Because it's gone beyond the films, right? We're even looking at something called zombie walks. Um, 
And a zombie walk is where a bunch of people get together and they dress up like zombies. And they walk, obviously. And sometimes we use those for charity fundraisers. And sometimes they just have fun. to see the full text of the zombie or the full video of the zombie walk I'll put a link to the Prezi um, it's kind of neat but I mean we're recreating these zombies right just I guess you'd call them regular people are choosing to dress up like flesh-eating undead monsters and walk through the cities um, for all sorts of reason uh, for all sorts of reasons so what we're witnessing is this intersection of culture Right, our traditional culture, our pop culture, and technology. Right, it's not just the spread of the zombies that's technological, but the zombie walks. When you look at them, um, they're using Twitter, they're using social media to post the videos, and to link everybody together. And it's this sort of intersection of our culture as we know it, the sort of pop culture influence of the zombie and the technology to be able to organize and create all of this stuff. Um, now, what is it they're trying to create? I'm not sure. Um, and I'm not sure anyone can really be sure on a revitalization movement. I mean, usually we can look at them and go, oh, well, there's this horrible thing going on. The white men are taking our land, so there's a religious movement. Or the white men have guns, so we're trying to get them. Those are pretty clear-cut examples. But there's other revitalization movements throughout history, and, and you don't really know what it is they're moving against. At least the participants don't. Right, maybe an outside observer like an anthropologist does. But the participants just know something's wrong and they're trying to fix it. And I think our obsessions with zombies is exactly that. But the question becomes what world does that create? I don't know. You know, I mean, I hope it doesn't create the zombie apocalypse. Um, unlike a lot of my high school students, I'm. Uh, not looking forward to that if that was to ever become a real thing.